Hey everybody and welcome to a new video. So this is another episode of Real Talk and today I have a very special guest with me today. Oh, I didn't even get you in the frame when you did. We are going to be talking about taking the next step. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, just doing it. Just, uh, just gotta... Just I guess do it. it. You can't just let things come to you in life mm -hmm. without you having to work for it. You have to actually be the one to take that step and get what you want. If you want something, you gotta get it, you know? You just can't expect it to come to you, you mm -hmm. know? And you can't let the fear stop you. Yeah, the fear Try. and yeah, anything that might be, like, in your way, you just gotta, like, there, there comes a point where you just have to, no more, no more being afraid, no more f any of this, I'm, I'm just gonna do it, you know? I guess I'll, I guess I'll just start with like a, an example that I might have. So, um, I've had to take a step many times, even if I've been afraid, um, whether it be like for auditions, uh, sometimes I, I often like found myself like outside of the audition room and then I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating my audition yeah. being next and like there's like um the person who's before you is in the room right now and you all you can think about is like oh my gosh i'm next and i, I just can't walk into that room mm -hmm. the first time i ever had that experience i was in eighth grade as a little middle schooler about to be a freshman in high school and i was doing my high school band audition and i remember um I was outside of the audition room and Mr. Lesniak was visiting JFK. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And um, I was just, uh, Mr. Lesniak is one of my band directors or was one of my band directors. And he was uh, visiting from the high school to listen to the to the eighth graders, you know, and see what kind of music um, and what kind of skill he'll have next year for the freshmen. I was outside of that room. I was like, uh uh. Like I had rehearsed so much, like, um, because that's, that's a part of it, you know, preparing for what you're afraid of. And in this case of the audition, I wanted to really perfect that audition. And I wanted to make it perfect, so I did everything that I could to make it good, which was preparing. Of course, like I'm, I was still gonna be nervous. And when I finally stepped into the audition room, I, I, I was like shaking so much, yeah. and I actually started my audition. And then he stopped me after two measures, being like, "Okay, hold on, before you start, just you know, take a deep breath." Aww. And then, <laughs> Aww. Um, I can just picture like eighth grade Jason just being like, "Yeah, I'm <laughs> so scared." I remember um, once we got to high school, and Mr. Lesniak was talking about. Um, uh, every any time he listened to auditions, he would rather have the students like be nervous about it. He would rather have them be like uh, anxious over it because it shows that they care about it, you know. And um, and they want to do good. Like, yeah, they don't want to. Yeah. If you don't care, you're just gonna be like, oh, I know, I, care. I, I cared about it a lot, and um, mm -hmm. so that's why, like I was talking about, I just prepared so much for that audition, mm -hmm. and uh, I and I did make it into the band that I was auditioning for, symphonic band, and um, so yeah, and then then that also goes for any like like theater audition or choir audition and then um i had a lot of auditions last year for senior year like uh like going to like colleges and stuff like that oh, so can't really <laughs> um do you have any experiences with that um the first one that came up to my like came into my head was probably like mr lesniak too um senior year when i transferred to plainfield east it was probably like three years or well freshman year of high school since i've played in band like anything. I actually like went in between percussion and like playing the flute for like since middle school to freshman year and then I just stopped because I didn't think it was my thing anymore but then I came to play for these and I'm like it might be my thing again. I don't know. I want to try it out and um, I remember like it was sometime during study hall he said come in and just like play a piece that you know and I was like oh, I don't know anything. <laughs> no, he was like yeah just like because I played marimba, and he was like, yeah, just like, find something that you have on the marimba and play it. And then, when I played it, I just kind of pretended like he wasn't listening. And like, I played it pretty well. So I think that kind of helps, just like, yeah. pretending that like, it's not an audition. Just yeah. think it's just them like, listening to you. Mm, and it makes it less Yeah, because that's what you intense. have to do, you know, yeah. you just, um... Like, uh, like if you have to give like a public speech or something, yeah. how they say, like, just take off your glasses or yeah, pretend they're not that's there. What I did, yeah. So, yeah, uh, if you're anticipating a lot of things, you might have some like ideas, like, mm -hmm. how could I make this less scary? And a part of that was pretending that Mr. Lesniak wasn't in the room, mm -hmm. you know. And I find like this is actually something I found out like this year, first year of college, when I like present in front of like large audiences, a good thought to have is like that everyone is so self-conscious about themselves that they're not judging you. So if you go up there and you have to present, probably every other student in the classroom has to also present. 
So they're watching you going like, oh my god, I'm gonna present like in a few minutes, I'm scared. They're not thinking about, oh, they're they're doing that or they're doing that. Like, yeah. you, everyone is so focused on themselves and not, not in a selfish way, but everyone is thinking like... Like, I hope I don't mess yeah. this up. And if anything, when they're seeing you give your speech, they're hoping that it'll go great for you because they don't want it to happen yeah, to themselves. Yeah, everyone's like hoping, hoping that... No one really like wants someone to fail, mm, like because yeah. that's just like sad to see, or like they yeah. they empathize with them, like normal people em empathize. So just know yeah. that like people aren't out to get you when you're like performing or when you're like you know auditioning mm. or trying something new. Like people don't want to see you fail, and yeah, that's like every experience I've ever had. Like thinking that mm. they're gonna like judge you or like look at you weird, but that has never happened. So I don't know why. I mm -hmm. think like that every single time I go into an audition that they're gonna like hate me or a job mm -hmm. a job interview that yeah. happens too like when you go into a job interview you think that they're gonna like ask you a question and then you're gonna say the wrong thing and then you're you're done like yeah. you have no chance like yeah and there there often comes like sometimes when someone is so nervous that they actually like don't go through with it they mm -hmm. say like like oh I'm waiting outside like the job interview room and uh no, I'm I'm too nervous. I'm going home, and they don't actually. They they call them later on, and be like, "Hey, um, I'm gonna cancel my interview. Um, um, we're gonna take this another day." And that goes with procrastinating because you're so scared. But sometimes it's the right thing to do. Yeah, just um, like you're not ready yet. Like yeah. it's okay not to be ready. Like you can't push yourself to do everything all the time. Like mm -hmm. sometimes, like like for a driver's test, if mm -hmm. you're like, "I could do this," but then you go there and you're like, "I don't feel comfortable," then that means. Like, sometimes you have to trust your instinct if mm -hmm. you don't feel safe yeah. or you don't feel, like, prepared. Yeah. If you have more time to practice, take that time and just make yourself, like, the best you you can be. Mm -hmm. And that's 100% okay, but of course there comes a time where you have to finally yeah. get past that. And it really, like, teaches you how to better yourself and perfect yourself so you can be, um, like, greater each time. Yeah. You know? At the beginning of this year, um, our friend... Can I call her out or should I should we not? Oh, well, I don't know what it is. Oh, it's nothing bad. Okay. Well, she wanted to audition for a show and she was like not prepared, but she was like, she kind of still wanted to do it, but she's like, oh, I'm not, I didn't practice it enough. So I came up with like the saying, like, you're not going to lose anything if you audition. Like you're either going to get it or you're going to be in the same place you are now. Yeah. So the only thing that could happen is going up or staying at the same place. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So whenever you, whenever you audition for something, you don't, you really have nothing to lose. You no. know. Um. And there, are, there are a lot of times where I like, oh, I'm like, should I audition? Like, like, do I do I even bother to audition mm -hmm. with this? But then, like, someone tells me, like, well, you might as well, because like, um, the opportunity's there. So you might as well take it, because like, if you, if you make it in, that's great. And you never even like knew that you were gonna make it. If you, like, because imagine mm -hmm. if you hadn't even auditioned you wouldn't even be in the scoop and then if you didn't make it you're like you said you're just in the same place that you're in now mm -hmm. you have nothing to lose if you if you're too scared to go into that audition or that job interview or even going as far as like asking like a professor a question or something um our friend sam yeah uh he has this one saying that i really like the answer is always going to be no until you ask and that i feel like that is very good mm -hmm. because um that goes to the whole entire theme of like you, you just got to do it because you never know like what it'll bring you mm -hmm. you know you just you just have to take that step and of course you don't know what what is going to happen but that's the entire point that's why you're asking it what that's why you're going forward with it you mm -hmm. know isn't another thing that you always say to me like whatever you think it's true I yeah it, it, I, it was originally from from boss baby it's like really? um, yeah it's something like oh um my God. whether you think you're gonna make it or not mm -hmm. you're right you know, because yeah. it's it's all about mindset, really. You, the human brain is like guided by your thoughts. You know, you, your thoughts run you. So you really have to be like thinking the, the correct things. Because um, if, if you're not thinking like the right things that'll put you in the right direction, that's going to like tear you down. Mm -hmm. That's only going to hold you back, you know. That's at least to like, um, you have to be like optimistic about things. You have to be positive. Try not to like make bad scenarios in your head like like oh what if i'm gonna mess up at one mm -hmm. part what if i'm gonna do this well like, like what does that help yeah it like there's what a does that do? yeah there's a difference between um identifying what you're gonna mess up on and making sure that doesn't happen than making up all these scenarios to just make it worse for yourself you know mm -hmm. and like don't say what if like don't worry about something until it happens yeah 
Like if something, if you think something bad is going to happen, just don't let that come to your mind because it's not happening right now. Yeah. Until it happens, then you, then you have permission to worry about it. Even if something does go bad, then that'll only give you the opportunity to perfect it for next time. Mm -hmm. If there is a next time, but you know, there, there's always like a like another chance for pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things are like meant to be. Like also senior year, I tried out for the basketball team and I also auditioned for the dance team. What did I say audition for dance? Yeah. Yeah, I auditioned for the dance team. And I was so excited for both of them and I didn't make either one of them. And I was like, oh wow, like I'm not talented. I'm like useless. Like I can't even like do something that I thought I was good at. Like I was, I was good at basketball since a young age. And I thought I was good at dancing since, since like a long time ago. And I was like, why, why didn't they choose me? And then <clears throat> a month later was like musical auditions. And I was like, well, I guess I'll do it because I don't have basketball or dance, so like, what's there to lose? And like, I'm glad I did that. Like, I'm almost glad that I, I'm, I, I am glad <laughs> that I didn't get into dance and uh, basketball because I had better things waiting for me. Like, meeting all the friends that I made in musical and like, having so much fun. Like, I didn't know I enjoyed performing that much until Joseph, the musical we had senior year, because I had never performed like that before. Like, I learned something new about myself, and I met like so many great people from it. So like, I think that was like, if you believe in fate, like that was like, it, it was meant to be for me mm -hmm. not to get those two things in order for me to find this beautiful thing that mm -hmm. I didn't know was waiting for me. Exactly, and um, cause that's. <laughs> That's where we really got close was during the musical mm -hmm. Joseph. So that kind of leads me into my next topic about um, her being in the musical because that's, she mentioned how she met so many close friends and I was lucky to be one of them. And that's actually how we started talking. And if uh, if she hadn't like um, gotten that blessing in disguise, mm -hmm. she would have been like on the basketball team and in the dance team instead of the musical. I'm sure that that would have been amazing too. Yeah. But you know, of course, um, you wouldn't have like met a lot of people that you are very close with now and have gotten close with them. Mm -hmm. And um, the story that I have with that is because um, yes, we did start getting close during the musical, and we eventually started to form feelings for each other. And um, but. I guess at the time, like, we were both afraid of that because mm -hmm. of the past relationships that we had gotten out of before. They were, like, just not very good. Mm -hmm. And um, so, of course, w that's what we were afraid of, of that being, like, like another, another bad relationship. Mm -hmm. And so, but eventually, um, we did, like, confess our feelings to each other. But then we did tell each other that, like, um, as for right now, we just want to focus on ourselves and have a wonderful, like, rest of the senior year. Yeah. And then um, we just want to, we just want to be ourselves at the moment. Now, we could stay, like, great friends, but we did, like, know that we had feelings for each other. So we said, like, in the future, if it ever, like, comes to that moment where we will start dating, then like, that's what, what's gonna happen. Yeah. But as for right now, we're just gonna continue getting closer and closer. We ha had the plan of like, um, start liking each other more and more yeah. and then just like ease into you it, like, right? Like get to know each other as yeah. friends. Cause I feel like that's the best way to like start a relationship with anyone, no matter like what like spot you want them to have in your life. Like you should start like, you know, get mm -hmm. to know them as a person. Like, never, like, rush into being like, oh, you're my best friend, or oh, you're my boyfriend, or oh, you're yeah. my brother. I don't know. Like, something like that. Like, you want to, like, you know, get to know them. Yeah. And, and we did that. Yeah, and we didn't want to be that one couple that, like, right after, um, right after they meet, they, like, start dating, and then, like, it's only no. been, like, two weeks since their last relationship, and then it's like, oh, you guys are dating. Like, yes. wow. Like, so, you know, we didn't want to rush things because, you know, like, that's just... That's we, not really healthy. Yeah, it's not healthy to rush things, go into a relationship, like, right after your last one. Mm -hmm. And, um, so we said that, like I said, we're just gonna keep being friends, and then we were gonna let time take its course, and we were just gonna let it come naturally. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's great right um that that what that i agree that was a great mindset to have i i'm glad that we did what we did mm -hmm. except that you have to realize the time where like it's actually time to like step forward and make it happen because yeah. like i had the mindset there's this quote that um, my family uses a lot where things of quality have no fear in time no matter how long it'll take for it to come if it really means something then it'll be there and i i always went by that but then there came a moment where i 
I might have like started to like let things pass me by and I I expected things to just come to me if I waited for it, but that's that's not reality. And the you know? thing is like I had the same mindset as he just said, so it's kinda hard when like two people are both thinking like, Oh, it'll happen naturally, like Yeah, but who's actually gonna be the one that actually makes yeah. it happen? My friend Christian was giving me a little pep talk about that. He was telling me like too often in life you're gonna let that little mindset of yours that whatever quality something stays in time or some shit. Okay. That's how you miss opportunities. If you had an audition for a Broadway show and they were like, hey, we need you to be here on May 24th, you wouldn't be like, hmm, well, I'm not going to go on May 24th because if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. <laughs> well, here's the no, thing. That's, that's Broadway it's shows. all about time. Broadway shows are no. there. There's a deadline. There's no deadline for relationships. Yes, there is. <laughs> and it's now. It is cuffing season. You're just letting things pass you by. You you can't like I I understand like what you're doing and that's great. That's a great mindset like um like letting things happen at the right moment. But you what you need to realize and what I wasn't getting is that you need to actually take a step forward once you know that you guys have peaked your feelings, which we definitely had a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But and we we both knew that in our heads. But again, we never. It was a fear. Yeah, that neither of us back. took the step forward because we were so afraid of our past relationships, like bleeding into and being a problem. This one, yeah, like those same problems. So eventually, I came to that realization, and then, um, and then I, I gave you that talk, and then we did start dating. Yeah. It it took it took a while it, because we still both had that fear. It was yes. really me though. <laughs> you were ready for like maybe like two weeks before me, and and like. I did want to be with you. Like it's not mm. like I was like, oh, I'm not ready yet. Like yeah. I was ready. We, we both had trouble breaking out of that, but um, I would say you took a little bit longer. Yeah, just because I, I remember it was because I was afraid of like a label. Mm hmm. Because you know, like past experiences can really, you know, be traumatizing or like mess you up for like future similar situations, like relationships, especially like if you have a relationship in the past, you're gonna automatically think that the next thing is going to be like, like it similar. was in the past because mm -hmm. it's like that's a natural human thing like that's like i feel like a human survival technique is just like okay this happened last time this will happen the next time like that's just yeah. how we work it's different now like we're not like cavemen like we need to know that like sometimes things happen and then we move on and then we understand that we're ready mm -hmm. when we feel it like we have to trust our instincts. So it was all about um, knowing when it was the right moment because it's great to wait for things. Uh, it's great for um, it's great to have the mindset of letting things come naturally. But there has to be a time where you gotta know yeah. when it's it's you've waited long enough, and I will actually want to take a step forward now. And if we kept that going long enough, we eventually would have never even like mm -hmm. became a thing. So yeah, basically. Don't let things pass you by in life. That's just some little advice that uh, we were able to learn and we want to share it to you guys. If you want things to happen, you gotta make it happen. I, I think that was a good discussion. I, I liked yeah. that one, yeah. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode of Real Talk. I hope that we were able to help any of you guys watching. If you liked it, don't forget to like, favorite, comment, share, and subscribe. Join the A-Team today and I will see you guys in the next video.